Learning to trust again is not about what happened to us. It's about how we choose to live from this moment going forward. We can choose to stay stuck, to not trust again, to hide it behind our walls and justify our loneliness, or we can choose to keep going and find a way to trust again. Well, today's video is for those people who want to learn how to keep going. They want to trust again. I'm going to share with you five simple steps to give you that sense of safety and trust so that you can start trusting again and find the connection and the intimacy and the love that you deserve. And the first step in this process, the most important step in this process, is learning how to forgive ourselves. And I say that because while most people think that the solution lies outside of us, like how do I trust them? Ultimately, at the heart of all trust issues is an inability to trust ourselves. Like once we clear away the other person, stop thinking about them, stop talking about them, and all the ways they legitimately hurt us, what's the inner voice inside of all of us? Damn it, why was I so stupid? What was I thinking? I knew better. I shouldn't have let this happen. There is this deep, inner resentment that many times people won't even admit they have. Like that's how much they've suppressed that they're really upset with themselves. You know, this sense, e even if they didn't say it, there is a sense that there's something defective or wrong or bad in me that this happened to me. That's why there's a lot of don't blame the victim because the victim is already blaming themselves whether they admit it to themselves or not. And so the, the biggest reason we are unable to trust others is we haven't forgiven ourselves. We have the trust we broke within ourselves needs the greatest repair. The first thing to recognize, the first step in learning to forgive ourselves is, is to really embrace the concept. I am human. I am perfectly imperfect. I am not bad. I am not stupid. None of us are. We will make mistakes no matter how many of these videos we watch, how many books we read, how many courses we take. We are going to make mistakes. And that leads to the second piece of forgiving ourselves. All of us at all times, no matter what's going on, we are always doing the best we could in that moment. We are the best of every aspect of ourselves. If we could do any different, we would have done different. And this will trip people up because they'll say, but I knew what to do. I knew I was making the wrong choice. Well, what that shows is you were in fact doing the best you could because the process of change, think of when you've done things different, whether it's say you're learning a sport and you know, a golf swing and you like, you know what to do, but you can't quite get your body to do it or you have learned about boundaries and you know what to say, but you can't quite say it. Well, that's how all of us work the process of change. One of the key hallmarks is the ability to know beforehand, but not be able to take action. Well, what that proves is even if you knew what to do and you didn't do it, you're just in the process of growth and therefore it is proof. You were doing the best you could with who you were at the time and what you knew at the time. If you could have done better, if you could have known better, you would have. And that's the embodiment is, no, that was the best I could do. No matter what, it was the best I could do. And you'll hear people, no, I could have done better. Well, that's childhood trauma. That's the perfectionist little child standing up screaming. Well, that's what we have to learn to love and protect and go, no, no, that's not true. That's a lie. You did the best you could and I love you. And I'm sad this didn't work out for me, for the little, you know, person inside of me, but it was the best I could do. And you see the, the key, why this is so important is the third step to forgiving ourselves or the third piece of it is when we embody that we are human and perfectly imperfect, when we embody that we are always doing the best we can with who we are at the time and what we knew at the time, that allows us to drop the shame, have grace and forgiveness for ourselves. That's the recognition that life is a journey and we are on it.
<laughs> we are definitely on it because <laughs> we're going through the grief process and this ain't fun, Kenny. Like I'm hearing you telling me to trust myself, but man, this journey stuff, like, can we just get to the end? Well, just think of it. If we didn't have these challenges, what would life be? We'd be awfully bored. So that's why I'm always saying, enjoy the journey. And so the first part of forgiving ourselves is that three-step process. It's just part of the journey. We're doing the best we can. And do you see the smile on my face? Come on, lighten up. Let it go. Just love yourself. It's the best you could do. Like, put the billy club down. All right, so that's step number one. Step number two, go become an expert. There are a couple reasons for this. As I've talked about in other videos, one of the greatest ways to change the way we feel about ourselves in any situation is to learn. It creates some of the biggest amount of chemicals to make us feel better about ourselves. So trust, we feel bad. We don't like ourselves. And so learning changes that, all right? The other thing is, is remember what got us caught, what made us perfectly imperfect and human and allowed a situation to happen that wasn't that didn't work out the best for us. We just, that's the, we had limited information. We need more knowledge, skills, and tools. That's what becoming an expert is. We need to learn more about why are you watching this video? You want to become an expert. You're gaining knowledge, skills, knowledge that after practicing, you will develop a skill. That's the skill of practicing, which will eventually will become a tool. So the reason things didn't work out is you were in the process of taking original knowledge. You were obviously at the skill portion of trying it out because it hadn't quite become a tool because it didn't work out. And so it wasn't cemented as this is what I do. And that's why you were in that process. You knew what to do, but couldn't do it. You were in stage two. Well, that's, this is, you're now learning more knowledge to develop this skill a little and refine it more so that it can become a tool. And so here's the other thing to recognize is, remember, we were the best version of ourselves in that moment. If we could have done more or done differently or learned more, we would have. But our best knowledge of the time, the situation, and the person brought us to this situation in our life, to this part of our journey. So if we want something different in our life, what do we have to do? We have to change the person that we are because the best version of ourselves brought us here to where we lack trust. So we need to go become an expert to develop the knowledge that we can work into, you know, practice as skills before it becomes a tool to be the next greatest version of ourselves. That's expertise. That's the journey of life. And we do this over and over and over. It never ends, ever, ever. We will never perfect anything. We will constantly, like a butterfly, you know, a, a, a caterpillar going in a cocoon and becoming a butterfly. That's all every situation in our life is. We are always the caterpillar going into the cocoon, coming out the butterfly. We are now the next greatest, prettiest uh, uh, version of ourselves is the butterfly and our wings and everything look great. And we fly along and then we land on the wrong damn petal. <laughs> and boom, we thought this would be the greatest flower ever. And well, that was the best version of ourselves that thought that was the best flower. It collapses, becomes the caterpillar and goes through the whole metamorphosis once again. And that's why we always, we want to be learning, becoming an expert, because wherever we are in our journey, wherever we are in our life, especially if things aren't going well, what that means is, all, all the knowledge that I've gained brought me to this place. If I don't like it, if I don't like my money situation, my relationship situation, my career situation, that means I need new knowledge, skills, and tools. I need to change the person that I am to get what I want. I'm the one responsible for that, not them. Remember, this is the trust thing. I'm rebuilding my trust. Okay, so the best version of myself put me in this situation. Doesn't mean I'm bad. Doesn't mean I'm stupid. It just means that this is where I'm in my journey. So I need to gain more so I can go to the next level of my journey. That's it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's the life journey. Step number three. Now we start switching in by 
giving ourselves permission to forgive ourselves by committing that life is a journey, that we're going to be a caterpillar and a butterfly over and over and over the rest of our lives. That frees me from the responsibility of perfection. I don't, I don't have to worry about somebody breaking my heart or something bad happening. And now, I'm taking responsibility, and that opens me up to the next three questions. Uh, the next three steps, and they're all questions. The first one is this. What part did I play in this situation? As I always say, when trust is broken, while the other person is responsible for choosing to lie to us, and, and I would never condone it, I'd never let them off the hook, I would never enable them. The bottom line is this. We allowed them into our life. Again, that goes back to number two. The best expert we could be in our life brought, chose this person, allowed this person close to us. That's why we have to go back and gain new knowledge, skills, and tools. So I pick a new person that doesn't do this. I am responsible for that. So do you see what else this does is when we're stuck in the inability to trust, we're stuck in the first three stages of grief. Remember what they are. The first stage is shock, all right, then denial, and then bargaining, okay? So we're, we're stuck replaying the events of the relationship, and all of those focus on the other person, all right? When we're not trusting somebody, or when we don't trust, we are stuck replaying the events of the situation. We haven't moved into sadness, de sadness slash depression or acceptance because we keep making the problem about them, how they broke our trust, how mean they were, how awful they were. That's our defense mechanism to, to not take ownership, but it keeps us stuck. It keeps us stuck in the old greatest version of ourselves where we broke our trust. So when we're here, we are rejecting ourselves. We are breaking our own trust. Now we are doing it to ourselves. And so asking that question, what part did I play in this situation? Do you see where that moves me? Stage four, grief, stage four, sadness, depression. I am going to move through this. And this is where I get to heal. This is where I get to learn to love and nurture myself and find ways to console myself and meet my own needs. Do you see? This is the cocoon. I'm coming in. Like I'm, I've shed the caterpillars out there with all those little feet, you know, stomping on other people, blaming other people, eating leaves and going, it's this leaf, it's that leaf. No, don't make it about me. It's about them. Well, when we shift in, when we gain new knowledge, skills, and tools, we decide to go into that cocoon. We feel the sadness. We mourn the death of us that the best version of us brought us here to this person in this situation. And you know, it would have been great had I known more, but I didn't. So now I'm gonna go back inside this cocoon. I'm gonna heal myself. I'm gonna love myself, adore myself. I'm gonna take that knowledge. And as I develop the skill, I'm gonna embody the tool inside that cocoon. And then I'm gonna be rebirthed as the butterfly. That's why we ask that question. What part did I play in this situation? Because that provides me the knowledge at how my less than perfect self, my humanness, brought me to this new stage of development where I can go back into the cocoon and come out something better. That leads me to the next step. Step four, who does this remind me of? See, when it comes to attraction, many people don't realize this. But all attraction is, that chemical release we have in our body, that butterfly feeling we're all chasing, literally, everyone's brain and body in that moment, what's happening is they are seeing a representation of their childhood, of the pain, of the confusion, of the sadness that they experienced in childhood. Their brain and body is literally going, oh my God, this person's perfect. I'm gonna feel just as crazy, just as unsure, just as confused as I did with mom, dad, brother, sister, and everybody. That's literally what attraction is. And so that's the next question. Who does this remind me of? Because all attraction is based on our childhood. It's how the brain and body works. When we, we learn about relationship, 
in the first really three years of our life. And those are emotional experiences. And so our parents, perfect imperfections in those moments. And then really the first seven years of life, when we experience our parents are human and imperfect and they don't have relationship with us perfectly. And so that becomes our blueprint. It gets imprinted into the subconscious part of our brain that this is what relationship is and this is what I want. And that's why there's such a massive chemical release. Our body is like, oh my God, I'm home. So ask yourself, how did this person look just like the insanity or the craziness that you experienced? Like my first wife was just like my father and, my, and one of my brothers. My second wife was my mother, okay? That's all we're ever picking. And so those people, like I, when I work with clients and I'll sit there with them on dating apps and I'm like, show me how you swipe. And they're like, no, no. And it's hysterical. I'm like, so they're boring. Is they're going, no, I'm like, they're boring, right? I'm like, okay, so tell me when one catches your attention. And they're like, ooh. And I'm like, okay, so where do you see this? Where do you feel it? Where in your body do you feel it now? What's your first memory of having that feeling? All of a sudden, they'll tell me something from their childhood. And I go, okay, was it mom or dad? <gasps> Bingo. Do you see? Now you know why you're attracted. That's mom at four years old or dad or whatever it was. That's why the other ones are boring because they're not, they don't have that emotional chemical charge. It doesn't mean you shouldn't pick them. But here's why you ask, why, does they, why do they remind me of this? They are showing you the painful emotions from your childhood you haven't healed. That's why you want to know this. That's the cocooning. So each relationship, each person we pick, that's why we should keep trusting. Because the more we go through this process, the more we heal. The more we go into the cocoon, the more we come out the butterfly. All we ever do is keep becoming the best version of ourselves. Prettier and prettier and more developed and more colors and more exotic aspects to our wings and everything about us as the butterfly that we all are. So that's why we want to ask these questions is each person that we've ever come across in relationship, we pick them to show us how to go into that cocoon, to show us how to love and trust ourselves and heal the original wounds where we broke, our trust was broken and we broke it with ourselves. And that leads in step number five, third question we want to ask, what is the gift? And there are three aspects to this. The first is, um, it shows me, as I just said, it shows me the pain from the past. Do you see how this person, this situation is a pure gift to us because it just walked us through. How do I find me? How do I heal me? Well, it was through this person. That's why I picked it. Number two, is every time I go through this uh, process, this cocooning process, I get better at emotional mastery. I get better at navigating the depression stage of the grief cycle, which gets me into acceptance. And ultimately, what is acceptance? Acceptance is about accepting you and accepting me. So do you see why we want to trust? Pardon me, why we want to go through this process is process over and over and over throughout that's the journey of life is because where do we always end up acceptance of all things in the world not just myself but you and so the avoidance those people who have stopped with relationship who stopped trusting stop trying they have chosen to stay frozen as the caterpillar to stay frozen in their growth frozen in their pain from their past they have planted their flag. I am going to limit my potential on this earth. I am stopping my journey. I'm not going to go to the moon. I'm not going to become the full butterfly and the full expression of myself. I would rather rot right here than live the journey of life. That's what they're choosing. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not judging them. I'm just bringing reality. Maybe that's been you for 20 years. And until now, you didn't have the knowledge to know this is what happens when we stop trusting. And so maybe in this moment, you, you're just like, oh my God, that's truth. Like it hits you. Like maybe there's a sense of you want to, God, I'm excited. I just spit. <laughs> I'm in the Jesus moment. <laughs> Sorry. I just laugh at myself sometimes, but 
Um, God, I get so excited. At, at any rate, um, you're in that moment where you're like, I haven't trusted. This is new knowledge. Oh my God, he's right. I have stopped the journey of life. I am going to rot here the rest of my life. Is this who I really want to be? No, I know what I'm capable of. I can trust me. I'm smart. I'm beautiful. I'm powerful. The heck with this staying stuck. Like, let's go on a date. Come on. Let's, t or let's try another business. Like, let's go. The heck with this. I'm not going to, you know, live a living death the rest of my life. No, let's go. Let's get in that cocoon. Let's learn about this. I want those wings of mine to start growing and learn to fly and branch out in color. And that leads us to the third piece of number five is when we do this process, do you see what we gain in every, by going through it, do you see there's only one outcome? We gain self-love, for developing self-forgiveness, for conquering our shame and dropping our denial. When we see all of ourselves, when we embrace all of ourselves, when we love our perfect imperfections, when we learn to trust ourselves, when we see that I picked you to see me and heal me, that you're a blessing in my life, when I let go of staying stuck in the first three stages of grief where you're the problem and I'm trying to figure you out so I don't have to go into that cocoon stage because I'm scared of it. Because I'm scared to death of becoming the beautiful butterfly that I am. Because as a child I was told I can't be that. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to overcome that. Well, I can relate to that. It's the scariest proposition for all of us. The greatest fear in life is not the fear of failure. It is the fear of success that petrifies all of us. What if I really got it? What if I really believed how beautiful I am? What if I really believed how smart I am, how capable I am? <gasps> then I'd have to live up to it. People would think I'm cocky and all, oh my gosh. No, no, no. I'll just stay stuck here saying I don't trust others and make it about them. It's a lot easier. Why do you think we destroy people who succeed on this planet? Because their success exposes to me that I'm not choosing to risk. I think it's tragic what we do to successful people, people who attain something, and then we, the crab thing, we all pull them down. We see their imperfections and we go, oh, they're disgusting. Do you see what they did? and we denounce all of the beauty that we celebrated on their way up. It's not about them. They were imperfect while they were on the journey to the stardom. Nothing changed. The only thing that changed was us. We kept seeing their face over and over and over and their stardom over and over. And what it saw was, oh my God, I'm not trusting myself to risk like that. They're showing me how I am choosing not to go in the cocoon and be my own butterfly. I don't want to admit that. So now I'm going to tear them down for what was always there. They were perfectly imperfect and they were human. But I ignored it. Well, not anymore because every time I see you, I see what I am choosing to ignore inside of me. Your greatness is my greatness. And I'm scared to death of it. Well... If that's you, and you're ready to conquer that, my solution for you is to go to my website, www.thegreatnessuniversity.com. In it, I have free chapters of my book, Your Journey to Success. You know what? I'm not even telling you to buy my book. <laughs> if you want to, great. That lays out the full process on how to trust yourself and how to conquer all of this. But if you don't want, if you're not ready for that, just go to the tab about my book, there's you can listen to it on uh, the, a chapter for free on Audible or read it either. They're both free. It's a free chapter. Go start the process to learn how to love yourself. If you want something else for free, go to www.thegreatnessyou.com and take my Your Journey to Emotional Mastery course. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. 
but it'll give you the basics to start seeing how your feelings and these people you're attracted to, like literally go take the course and then pull up your dating app and swipe and start checking your feelings. And you're gonna go, oh my God, he's right. Every single person I like goes right back to my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> like it's hysterical how and, and everyone you don't like you're like oh it's just blank it's numb because because your brain already knows it knows it can pick up that's how that's how this trauma and everything works is you don't even have to meet the person but your brain and body goes eh, they don't have the same trauma you went through they'll be boring we need the trauma that we experienced for us to be attractive that's how it works there are a couple solutions for you. If you think this will help somebody learn how to trust themselves and learn and they want to turn from the caterpillar to the butterfly, please share it with them. Please leave me your comments and whatever you do, just like if you walk away with anything from this video, walk away with a couple things. One, you're perfectly imperfect. There's nothing wrong with you. You're a beautiful human. You get the choice to stay the caterpillar or the butterfly, and both are perfect. You don't have to do either one. And whatever you decide to do, enjoy that journey.